Hey guys, what is going on? This is Ip of HQuit TV casting the MLG open bracket. This is the winner's version. Both these players have not lost. It is July Zerg spawning as the Blue Zerg and Kiwi Kaki spawning as the Red Protoss on MLG Typhoon Peaks. It is a BO3 and game number one, Kiwi Kaki, one of the best I guess you could say American Protosses, or like American European, just best foreign Protoss all around in July Zerg. Possibly one of the best Zergs, I would say of all time, but then people are like, no, Jay Dong's the best Zerg. Possibly one of the best StarCraft 2 Zergs of all time, I know he doesn't have any accomplishments, but this guy has a big history of StarCraft and is very, very good. So we will be seeing hopefully a good game from both of these players. It is clash of two very good players who did not get in the championship bracket or the championship pool. This is just people who decided, you know what, I want to go to MLG and shows up. And it's kind of odd that we have a Korean player doing that. To my knowledge, July, well, MLG didn't exactly invite him. They were more than glad that he's coming. But to my knowledge, July is coming on his own, pays his own way, and has to fight his way through the open bracket and get to the finals and win it there. He has a very tough road ahead of him. People like, I think it was, who was the invites? It wasn't Bama, it was MC and Lucila, I believe, had kind of easier ways. July Zerg says, you know what, I'm just going to do it myself and uh, going to fight my way through just like any other Forno would or actually local to MLG would. And he is doing it very well, has made it very fall very far in this winner's bracket, but so has Kiwi Kaki, and Kiwi Kaki did make it to the finals of the last MLG, so definitely a very good Protoss player, we'll see if he can make it to the finals here, and he has to take out July Zerg to keep his way, just keep doing well, because if he loses this series, he does get a lose bracket, he still is very has a good chance of winning MLG, but he won't make it to the championship bracket, which they just have a better chance to get into the finals. We do have Kiwi Kaki throwing down that side of so he's playing this game very, very standard. And July Zerg still doesn't have a hatch. He didn't hatch first. He's not at 21 food yet, so if he doesn't throw a hatch, it's not going to be that late. Most Zergs, well, they don't go hatch first against Protoss just because Protoss can do so many different things. Even if they go gateway first, they see that hatch first, they can throw down the forge, get cannons up before the hatchery is done, so see a lot of them do go for the hatch after that. And I normally saw 21, but throughout MLG I've been seeing 20 hatches all around, and July Zerg is getting that speed as soon as possible. That thing's already halfway done. And he hasn't put his drones back on that gas. As you do see, he has zero gas in that speed researching, so he pulled them off right when he had 100 gas. And those lings are going to be making their way into Kiwi Kaki's base to see what he is up to. And let's just look. He just has one gateway right now, has two gas. So it looks like Kiwi Kaki is going to be going for some type of fast expansion build with a lot of sentries. Or, well, he can throw down star gates. He can do a bunch of other things. But the more standard thing is to just throw down extra gateways, use those sentries so your minerals start stacking up and get a nexus out. And it's a very strong strategy, especially on Typhoon Peaks as this is a fairly large map. And what is, okay, that's a Zergling. I saw something blue there. I was like, oh my god, is he going to take a third hatch? That would be a very, very goody for July Zerg. He's put one drone back on gas, so it looks like he has a pretty solid build planned out. Just puts one guy back on gas, and now he's getting that roach one so he can get roaches out. And, uh, Speedling and Roaches deal very well with fast expansions of Protoss. We do see two more gateways going down, and a fourth gate. Is Kiwi Kaki actually going to be four gating July Zerg? I have been seeing a trend of four gates to just uh, do a four gate expansion with a lot of sentries. You can put pressure on your opponent, and it's safe against the uh, Ling Roach. I wouldn't say all in, but that Ling Roach play. And Kiwi Kaki's like, you know what, Supply Depot? I don't like you. There's no Terran on this, and I freaking hate those Terran, so I'm just going to take out the Supply Depot. Of course, this is just going to let him Sim City a little bit better. And the Speedlings are out. Only two Speedlings, though. Kiwi Kaki has plenty of defense against two of them, and they just look around to see what Kiwi Kaki is doing. This pylon placement does signal that Kiwi Kaki wants to expand. And it wouldn't surprise me if he throws down this Nexus and then cancels it later on, building another gateway and doing kind of like a five-gate all-in attack, but maybe it would surprise me, because that's Kiwi Kaki you're talking about. He is not known for his all-ins. He is known for just his creative and long-term play, 
building lots of motherships. We have seen one mothership from him in this tournament. I'm not sure if we saw more. I saw one personally casting, and it was pretty darn cool. We do have that queen just vomiting away on those hatcheries, and he is getting his roaches out. Going over this work account, you do see 34 drones versus 35 probes, but July Zerg, he can switch over to drones anytime he wants. Kiwikaki, holy cow, sentries! He has so many sentries out. That looks like eight sentries are out for Kiwikaki with two zealots. Those zealots will pretty much do nothing once all those force fields go out. Those sentries have pretty good DPS against lings when you have that many. I mean, when you have eight things of anything, even, well, maybe not workers. Maybe workers, that's the one thing. Or mules. Mules, it doesn't matter how many mules you have. You won't have much DPS, but again, no Terrans here. They did flee Typhoon Peaks, leaving some supply depots behind. And... Oh, Kiwikaki just trying to stop those links from getting any type of scout, but these links are seeing what the army composition is. And even though he did, he see this nexus. Yes, he has seen the nexus. And what is he doing? He is getting lots of roaches out. He is up to eleven roaches, and there are eight sentries, one stalker, and four zealots right now for Kiwikaki. They are matching work accounts, 40 germs to 41 probes. It was 40 to 44 a little bit. And we do have Kiwi Kaki with a probe up here. That looks like it could be hiding some tech later on. That may be hiding like a Stargate or Duck uh, Templar Archive. Well, not Templar. Twilight Council, then a Dark Shrine. We have no idea just yet. But yeah, that probe is definitely hiding out. Going to be used for something, and a Hallucinate Phoenix is going out for Kiwi Kaki just to scout, and he is going to see a bunch of roaches, and know that a Speedling Roach attack is bound to come very, very soon. And what is he going to be doing in defense? He is getting a Forge out now, so he can get some cannons. Cannons with sentries is great defense, and those Lings just taking out these destructible rocks where Kiwi, Kiwi Kaki ever tries to take his third base, well, he won't be able to additionally. If all his units get up here and the force fields go behind, they do have another path of retreat. However, it could be dangerous going down these ramps with so many sentries out. Kiwi Kaki pretty much has an unlimited amount of force fields just because he has so many. He's really going to not use enough energy to cast all those force fields. Look at this. Nine sentries now. This one can cast two. This one can cast four. This one cast one soon. Three... Three, three. Yeah, that's a lot of freaking force fields. And Overseer comes out. Poops out that changeling, but uh, doesn't really get too much scouting done. That probe's still just hiding in that top left. We do have a robo facility now just finishing. I don't see any Colossus play coming out. That would be the robo bay, but July Zerg just taking his third base and looks like I forgot to go on busy. So there we go. And now we do have a bunch of lings and roaches going in to attack Kiwikaki, but uh, no, he is going to pull back. Going over to this army count, you do see July Zerg. Well, maybe he doesn't have the larger army. He has a lot more minerals, or 400 more minerals, but he is behind by 600 gas. However, these sentries aren't really good at uh, doing too much damage against roaches. They kind of just tickle them. So this army count could be a lie. Sentry does go down. Guardian Shield goes up, and those roaches are going back. Kiwikaki doesn't get baited in throwing any force fields. Instead, he is getting an immortal out as well. That will help him a lot against any type of roach play and another changeling comes but this probe says nuh -uh, and gets that kill even when you kill changeling that does count as a unit and this overseer just trying his hardest to get changelings in the base additionally what that does it stops it from being feedbacked and uh oh looks like kiwi kaki is going to try to go in from the back a lot of roaches going in this way this could catch kiwi kaki out of position but the roaches are going back and looks like they're just going to go down this ramp this one overlord does see what Kiwi Kaki is doing. Kiwi Kaki has another rock to take out while July Zerg now just walking up and could get in really good position. Has forced Kiwi Kaki to pull back. And the Zerg just don't want to engage their force fields, cutting them all off. We do have Lings and Muters on the way. That is 13 Muters about to be out for July Zerg. And that will keep Kiwi Kaki kind of contained in his base. Kiwi Kaki does have that Colossus out now. And uh, just a lot of Whoop Gates. But we have lots of mutas, and look at all these spine calls from July Zerg just to defend against whatever does come. He is getting banelings. Does he have overload speed? No, he does not. He doesn't have ventral sacks. Those overloads are moving out. Those mutas do come in, pick off a few probes. Doesn't get too many. The five probe kills right now. 
And July Zerg is coming in with another set of mutas, but there's so many stalkers, there's mutas are gonna have to get out in there. Uh oh, he gets caught again, losing on two mutas that he didn't really need to if he had a better way to uh, get out. Kiwikaki is taking his third base. We have a bunch of roaches down here just chilling out. And a bunch of spine callers right here going over this work account. You do see 51 drones to 62 probes. So it looks like Kiwikaki, he may be in a very good position, staying up with the Zerg Mako. 148 food to 144 food. I don't know what July Zerg will really have in store for Kiwikaki. It looks like Kiwikaki should be able to win this. But these mutas have stopped this Nexus. And these roaches now coming in. Kiwikaki going for the attack. And the roaches coming back and going to try to do what they can. We have... Kiwikaki right now being supply blocked as a pylon has gone down. That cannon goes down pretty quickly. Now the Roach is going back out with those mutas. Just keeping Kiwikaki from attacking him. So now we do have Jalizog with a lot of banelings. That is a bunch of banelings, but a few force fields will be able to make those obsolete. I still don't see Ventral Sacks or the Overwood Speed upgrade. So it looks like Jalizog will just have to hope his opponent doesn't get force fields down. And I really hate that style of play. You're just like, well, I hope he doesn't force field me. All these spine claws are going to work. And oh my god, the Baileys are going in. Force fields do go down. These Baileys are forced to retreat. A lot of them have gone down. Mutas and Lings coming in from the back. Those Baileys trying to do what they can. But the Colossus do pick them up. Lots more force fields. These Roaches going Kiwi Kaki. Throwing force fields so much. Baileys finally getting a hit. And how is Jalizog doing this? He is stopping Kiwi Kaki's attack. And it looks like he's actually going to be coming out ahead on this. This Colossus is very close to going down. Does go down. And all these Stalkers are falling as well. Do have one Zealot in this middle line. He did get four kills. I'm not sure if those were all the drones. Going over this Wooker kill count. Six to three. Kirikaki putting a little bit more pressure. But Jalizog is on three bases right now. More Stalkers coming in. Those Stalkers do not have Blink. So Lings and Roaches can do fairly well against them. No more sentries. It's going to be a long time till Kiwikaki can get that sentry count up there again. And I still don't know how Jalizerg did that. Maybe he just kept putting the aggression and Kiwikaki just eventually missed force fields. Lots of Baneleys trolling in. And Baneleys are going against those Stalkers. Lots of Stalkers about to fall. Baneleys get a surround on the Stalkers and the Stalkers go down instantly. Now the Baneleys take out cannons. And Jalizerg with this Baneling heavy play against Protoss without the drop upgrade for the Overwood somehow is being extremely effective. Only took out one probe there, but Kiwikaki's losing a lot of mining time. He pulled a lot of probes back. 58 drones to 60 probes, and July Zerg is showing us how you can play Zerg without just maxing drones right away, putting on aggression all throughout the game. These roaches, not these exact ones, but July Zerg's roach play did keep Kiwikaki contained in his base till Jalizer got that Baneling count up and Roach is doing a lot of damage to that probe line and these Roaches taking out a Colossus it looks like yes he does get that Colossus down and these Stalkers are going to be caught between a rock and a hard place Jalizer just burrows regaining all that HP on those Roaches Observer is not near there goes the Observer now these Roaches are going to have to unburrow but the Lings are coming in and these Roaches can unburrow anytime they want and now they are going, looks like they are going to be helping out this, and this is going to be the fall of Kiwikaki in game number one. We will be going into game number two 